Hello, BookTube. I have a last week in BookTube segment for you here, for those of you who are new to the channel, and I, I, I gather that hundreds of you are. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, this is incredible. Uh, this is a section where I where I look back on the week that I, of my viewing on BookTube and point out some things I wanted to make sure you didn't miss. Uh, it's not meant to be comprehensive. There, of course, were thousands of BookTube videos. I watched a lot of them. I watched a lot more than I report on, uh, but uh, this isn't meant to cover everything. I'm sure I'm leaving out lots of great stuff. I just wanted to uh, a few things that that seem noteworthy to me uh and the and uh this last week the bulk of my youtube viewing was not booktube related for one of the only circumstances that will ever be true uh because here in america we are gearing up we're we're two days out from electing a racist sexist bigoted lying moron to the most powerful position on the planet. At which point we will just leap off a cliff with our fingers crossed and say, you know, let's hope for the best. Let's hope that we're all here in four years when maybe we can recorrect, we can correct this. And I, <laughs> and I was reminded of that uh, by Camel at what Camel reads. He, uh, he did a very good discussion of Eileen by Otessa Mosfei, which was, was shortly, uh, was up for the Man Booker Prize and didn't win it. Uh, and there's been a lot of discussion about it and his was really good and at the beginning of that discussion he uh he talked about american sports and he he did this and said that's baseball right it's hard it's hard for me to keep it straight <laughs> and it's on my mind because uh the chicago cubs just won the world series in american baseball uh something that they had failed to do in over a century they had one of the longest losing streaks in the history of the game and they broke it for this recent world series and there was jubilation in the streets of chicago uh and the reason that was on my mind is because I, my own hometown baseball team, the Boston Red Sox, also had a losing streak of over a century uh, and broke it in 2004, won the World Series in 2004. And right after they broke it, George W. Bush was elected to office for what I call the first time because he lost the first time he won and was given it by the Supreme Court. Uh, the second time he won, fair and square. And uh, I don't think it's any exaggeration to say the world is a much worse place for that having happened. And now the Chicago Cubs have broken their curse and, well, election day is in two days. <laughs> uh, uh, but the, <laughs> when I did watch book two <laughs> last week, uh, there were some themes that ran throughout. And I wanted to, uh, one of those was Nonfiction November. I'm starting to see more videos from people joining in with Gemma from Nonfic Books and Olive from a book Olive about nonfiction November, concentrating a little more, reading a little more nonfiction for November. I, of course, am all over it like marmalade on toast. <laughs> and uh, I saw more videos like that, made all sorts of notes, that that sort of thing, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and another event, an event that I've, I've also seen videos for, but I haven't participated in, and now I kind of regret it. Maybe I should jump in before it gets much older, is Shakes Along. And the, the video that I wanted to, to point out to you today, direct you to, is, uh, insert literary pun here, I, I, again, I look at these channels, these great, sharp, funny, smart channels, and I expect 10,000 subscribers, and I don't see it, but <laughs> the, the day will come, I am sure. Uh, but her, uh, 10,000 of you should subscribe, because her, her discussions are always great, and this one was about Macbeth, and, uh, was had some really funny barbs in it <laughs> so, so i'll leave i'll leave the link to this and everything else down below uh but it's worth your time to look at uh and uh luke lane reads I, I don't know if i've recommended his channel here before it's wonderful and he did one on the uh, video on collecting most disappointing books and it was a fantastic discussion and, and in depth too he's like adam at memento mori he's he's really good at packing a lot of content into a little space <laughs> a gift to them that some of us don't have <laughs> uh, and, uh, so if you don't subscribe to him you should go and do that i i was very tempted i may very well do a disappointing books video of my own although i don't know that you're ready for a video that would be quite that long <laughs> I, I am it's pretty much my profession it's pretty much my job to be disappointed by books <laughs> 
Uh, there was another thing I wanted to mention uh, that has to do with this. It has to do with, with QBism. It's a, it's a new book about the future of quantum physics. It was given to me by a very nice publicist at Harvard University Press. And, and, at my behest, because I want to understand more, I want to read, in 2017, I want to read more about quantum physics and try to understand a little more about what I'm reading than I already do. And I, this book came to me right at the same time that I saw Derek's video at Veritasium. I don't know if you watch his channel, but he did a video on quantum mechanics, and as usual, it was brilliant. It, just brilliant. I, uh, I learned a lot and also was confused a lot, as I am in all of his science videos. <laughs> so, so I'm leaving the link even though it's not specifically BookTube related, just because it was fascinating and it links with a book which I intend to uh, consume. <laughs> uh, and then what have we got here? Oh yes, uh, uh, the Rhodes vlog. Uh, Chris and Giselle Rhodes do a, a daily vlog. Uh, and then Chris takes the footage and fusses over it in his perfectionist way uh, basically forever <laughs> and then he posts the results and last week they, there was a video of uh, with with my girls <laughs> my my pointer and the basset hound that is wedged against me right now uh, they were they were in the video they were stars they were moving around it was kind of funny uh, we went to a library book sale here in Boston and came back to here to, to the house and sat for a bit uh, it's a little heartbreaking in a way for me, as video of my girls always is, because they're moving around in the first part of the video, and then a minute later, after the edits, a minute later, you can see them on the couch with me, especially Lucy, especially Pacifone, utterly exhausted. And that's true. <laughs> they, are, uh, they are not Nanook <laughs> from Connor's channel. They, they barely move at all, and anything tires them out. They're very old, and they're both sick. <laughs> so uh, it was fun to see them moving around in that video, uh, which captures the library book sale that I think we went to in 1995. Uh, Chris's daily vlog, he's got it all the way up to early 1996. He's, he's making great progress. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What else have we got? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Max at Well Done Books. He did a wonderful video. I, I, I'll try to remember to link both of them. He did a wonderful video in which he, he publicly shames himself. <laughs> For, for books that have been on his TBR forever and, but he just hasn't got to <laughs> I don't I don't know that I'm quite ready for an era of of auto public shaming <laughs> but I thought it was hilarious anyway but the video of his that I really like I just love them they they seem so pleasingly anachronistic is he didn't it, he he loves book of the month club the modern iteration of book of the month club so he did every month he does a video where he shows you their five selections talks about them a little invites you to join shows you what the packaging is like the whole nine yards i think they're it was the smartest thing they ever did to link up with him he is pretty much the perfect spokesman for for this sort of thing uh i noticed again that the, the in the current iteration of book of the month club they stamp their colophon onto the cover of the book uh, uh, not just not just the dust jacket but the, you take the dust jacket off the colophon is stamped onto the physical cover of the book uh, I think it's interesting. They they have changed over the decades that they've been around. They have changed around constantly the ways in which they put their imprint on a book. You never at Book of the Month Club when you sign up, you never get just a copy of the book that you could pick up at a bookstore. There, it all you can always tell that it's them forever and ever. The distinctive the distinctive mark was size. Their books were a little smaller than the print run of, of for the normal book. Now the books are the same size, but they, uh, which is probably cheaper, but they have that colophon stamped on them, which uh, might be anathema to book collectors, but it's a very graceful colophon, and uh, it, it's it's a it's a nice look. I I every video that he does where he urges people to give it a try, it, uh, it makes it look great, but <laughs> you can see this coming, I'm sure. Book of the Month Club has stopped doing nonfiction, which is it breaks my heart. They were once a great boon to historians and biographers because they once upon a time they were much more popular than they are now much more influential than they are now and you could get a good check from them if you got a deal with them and, and now they don't do it anymore i think pretty sure that all five books that max held up this time around were, were fiction and mostly they are uh, with the occasional you know non-fiction celebrity memoir or whatever thrown in but a big a big enormous work of history like uh Final Solution, David Cesarini, a great work of history that appears in 2016. 
there's no chance that would ever be even considered for Book of the Month Bubs. So it, it's sort of not for me, but it might be for a lot of the rest of you. So I'll, I'll leave the link and you should give it a try. Uh, and uh, also along the lines of something that's not quite for me, Emma at Emma Books did a video on how to read with a busy schedule. And it was really good. Her channel is just fantastic. And uh, she talked about a reality that I think would probably have a lot of you nodding in sympathy, where it feels like you have to schedule every single hour of your day a week ahead of time. <laughs> now, I, I, I watch those videos with a tiny blush of shame on my face, <laughs> as you could tell, because what you're looking at right now in this video is pretty much my life. Uh, a couple of days a week, I put on pants and I go to the Christian Science Monitor, my beloved Christian Science Monitor. I root around in the books, but it's, it's not like I'm punching a time clock there. I go, I chat with my editor, I root around in all the new forthcoming books, and then I go home, back here to my senior citizen dogs and all the care they need. And then the rest of it is reading and writing. Just reading and writing. <laughs> so so I, I watch videos like hers with a little bit of self-consciousness. She's talking about being a, a, a full-time student, having a full-time job. She's also a very popular booktuber, so she, and she mentions that that feels almost like another job. And I imagine a lot of you are in the same position. Makes, it makes my admiration grow that any of you would make videos and that a lot of you are doing Nonfiction November or Shakes Along or anything else. It, it, it's it's a significant commitment. I it, it, video her video was full of a lot of tips that some of them I don't agree with. Some of them that might work for you, but it was it also served as an excellent reminder to me uh, that BookTube is really a miracle that it exists at all. All of you are busy, uh, so I, I, I definitely urge, urge you to go and see it. Uh, and then the next three things that I want to wrap up here were three things that I not only liked but that I would like to see all the rest of you do. I would like them to do essentially to go viral <laughs> and the first is ben sanders who has a, a great feature on his channel where he finds brand new booktubers brand new i mean people who have you know a dozen two dozen subscribers who just started maybe only have a handful of videos and he analyzes the draws of their of their channels this is he, you'll go here for this this is another thing i particularly liked about it is really really good and, and you know we say that booktube is a welcoming community i have a a little bit of a fraught experience with that myself but if we get to my one year anniversary you can expect a whole video on that fraught experience no reason to rehash it here we, we say that it's a welcoming community and it is for the most part you you make a new video and say hi i'm going to try booktube you can almost certainly count on a lot of comments from strangers welcoming you to booktube and that's nice uh, but this feature on Ben's channel is a real welcome. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a detailed, here you go, I'm presenting this person to you, welcome. That's wonderful. And I would like it if more of you did that. When you find somebody, I think we should, we should be more actively involved in spreading the word when we find somebody we like. Uh, so I, I, I would encourage you all to do that. I think that should go viral. Another, but another thing that I wanted just, just recently, Love from CL did a video, a wonderful video, called Things I Hate About BookTube. <laughs> might not go, you know, a natural hand in hand with the first thing that I'm recommending, but it does. It does. There's not, there's, there's <laughs> those of you who, uh, <laughs> those of you who may have grown up in an Irish household will know that is often a mark of great involvement and affection to complain nonstop about something. <laughs> Sometimes it's the only form of communication. <laughs> uh, and uh, her video was wonderful. She, she listed a few things that I wholeheartedly agree with, a few things I hadn't thought of. And it made me want to see the rest of you do it. It made me, made me want to see a raft of videos on what I hate about BookTube. So I'll make you a deal. If the rest of you do it, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, and the last of these was Sam, Sam's Nonsense. Uh, this is something I mentioned in comments before, and I did it myself. She, she did a, just a quick video in which she gives us a guided tour of her commuter bag. Not book related, except it's a book where I'm doing it. And that's fascinating for me. And I did it myself, and I want to see the rest of you do it. When you pack a shoulder bag to go out and about in the world, what's in it? <laughs> I'm just nosy. <laughs> so if you feel like making that video, by all means do. I would love to see dozens of those. Uh, but the, the main thing, I, the thing I want to wrap up on, the main thing that covered BookTube last week, 
was NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, where thousands of people get together in the month of November with the intent of writing the big first draft of a novel. There were endless videos, just endless, and it was, I've watched them all. I love it so much. This is a, a phenomenon the like of which the world has never seen. Uh, Booktube is too, but with, with Booktube in the past, there, there it has analogs in the past in book clubs and book societies and then even libraries. Uh, NaNoWriMo has no uh, corollary in the past. It's, it's a new thing, a collective thing like this where everybody gets together to write the novel they've always had germinating inside them or to work on something that they've not put the time into. And there were endless videos of endless variety, people doing blogs, people doing updates, people doing encouragement videos, the whole nine yards, and of course the NaNoWriMo Society itself put out lots of videos. Uh, and that was the bulk of, I admit, to wrap things up here, that was that was the bulk of Booktube last week for me was NaNoWriMo. Uh, and I expect that's going to stay true for the rest of the month, uh, but we'll see. Uh, in any case, I will I will let you go for now, and, and uh, I'll try, again, I'll try to remember to leave everything linked down below. I sometimes forget about that and need to be gently reminded. <laughs> no, that today's not one of those days. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.